Okay. Uh, thank you for introduction. So my name is Yu Sasaki, and uh, oh, this. Uh, so uh, actually, we had the similar incident as first talk. I mean, uh, the co uh, my colleague Dan Pin Siwei and Chao Yun the Wei worked really hard, and they wanted to come here to present the results, but unfortunately, they faced some visa issue, and that's the reason I'm presenting the paper. Okay, so uh, this talk is about cryptanalysis on the Morris. And this, uh, so first, I'd like to give overview of our results without mentioning technical details. And the second part uh, is uh, technical details, which is uh, automated thread search. And to do it, uh, we have to solve uh, some uh, problems. And we propose the way uh, to solve uh, the problem, which is particular to the uh, ciphers, which uses AND gates for the source of nonlinearity. And the third part, uh, I give some detailed analysis on Morris. Okay, so uh, this slide shows the uh, fundamental knowledge about authenticated encryption. So on uh, uh, privacy and authenticity are two basic notions, uh, which is required for uh, uh, secure communication. And previously, encryption and Mac are independently computed uh, to provide both privacy and authenticity. And uh, authenticated encryption is uh, only in one approach. So this uh, simplifies the security discussion. Uh, this simplifies the, uh, some issues for implementations. And moreover, we can enjoy some higher performance by sharing the computation of uh, Mac and uh, encryption. And uh, from 2014, the community had some competition to select a portfolio of authenticated encryption. So this is called the Caesar. So the competition started from uh, 2014 uh, with uh, 58 candidates. And uh, most notably, uh, the last round started from March 2018, and the seven candidates were selected for the final round. And this year, uh, six schemes were chosen as a portfolio. Well, this is the list of seven final round candidates and our attack target Moros in the center. And this is the uh, six uh, final portfolio. And uh, so you can see that Moros was not chosen. And uh, we guess that our attacks are affected to the decision. Okay, so the Morris uh, has three members, depending on the state size and uh, key size. And uh, so the confidentiality depends on the key size, and the integrity is always 128 bits. And the bottom table uh, compares the results of the previous work and this one. Now, actually, the biggest version of Morris has already been attacked at DejaCrypt 2018, and the complexity was a 2 to 1, 5, 2, so it's a bit high, expensive. But due to this complexity, it, uh, the attack couldn't be applied to a smaller version of Morris, which claims security up to 128 bits. And in this research, uh, we found uh, linear trails with much higher coordination which requires only 2 to the 76 data complexity and the time complexity. And this allows us to attack old versions of Amoras. Okay, so I'd like to explain uh, linear thread search. Uh, this is the basics of the linear cryptanalysis. So suppose we have an event uh, E, which occurs with probability uh, 1 over 2 plus minus epsilon. And we say that this has bias epsilon. And then the correlation is defined as double of the uh, bias, and the weight is its uh, negative logarithmic. So let's uh, consider the case of uh, linear approximation of and operation. And uh, so we consider the uh, probability, uh, so we, we consider the event uh, that bit A and bit B uh, go through the AND gates, and let's consider the case that we approximated its output as zero. So the probability is, of course, three over four. 
So the bias is uh, uh, 1 over 2 plus 1 over 4. So the bias is uh, 2 to the minus 2. And the correlation is it's double, so 2 to the minus 1. And so weight is 1. And we have a uh, piling up lemma, uh, which is quite convenient to calculate the correlation of uh, X or of uh, several uh, independent uh, inside, uh, events. And the correlation of two X or events says that uh, uh, the, two, two, the correlation of X or of two uh, independent events is just like a multiplication of the correlation of uh, each event, which is quite easy. Okay, so the piling up lemma is very convenient, but uh, uh, in many cases, inputs are dependent. So suppose that we have an equation y is computed by uh, 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 the, uh, that equation, uh, including two uh, quadratic terms. And uh, the, actually, the uh, equation is uh, illustrated in the figure. So the question is, can we approximate uh, it output y to 0 with correlation 2 to the minus 2? Well, the implication is, uh, if we approximate the first uh, AND gates to the uh, one of the input x2 with correlation 2 to the minus 1, and if we, oh, sorry, if we approximate the second, x, uh, second AND gates to 0 with correlation 2 to the minus 1, then the result will be 0. So if piling up, piling up lemma applies, then the, the correlation that y is 0 can be calculated as 2 to the minus 2. So however, oh, this answer is no. Uh, because the piling up lemma only works for independent approximations. And this case is dependent. So we need the same, we need the same tool uh, to deal with dependent on the gates. So, uh, so we provide an algorithm to evaluate the correlation of any quadratic Boolean function, including independent AND gates. Okay, so uh, to that, uh, we first introduce the uh, concept of disjoint quadratic form. So the definition is as follows. So let uh, f is a Boolean function, a uh, quadratic Boolean function. And let sigma of f x i denotes the number of quadratic terms involving variable xi, okay? So a term xi, uh, xj, xi time, uh, and xj of f is a separated quadratic term if uh, sigma for each variable is one. And in particular, f is uh, called disjoint if all uh, its quadratic terms are separate uh, quadratic terms. So the bottom uh, demonstrates some examples. So let's focus on the rightmost one, which is not a uh, separated quadratic term. So for this example, uh, the variable x2 appeared, I mean, involved in two uh, quadratic terms. So this is not separated quadratic term. And then the example for disjoint quadratic form, uh, each variable appears only once in the uh, quadratic terms. Uh, we don't have to consider the uh, if, uh, impact from linear term. So, uh, so this is the definition of disjoint uh, quadratic form. And why we introduce this one? Because then the correlation can be easily calculated by finding a lemma because uh, every term is now independent. Okay. So now we propose an algorithm that, uh, that uh, converts any quadratic Boolean function to a disjoint quadratic form. So this uh, shows the basic procedure uh, of the transformation. So let's consider uh, some Boolean function shown above, so, uh, which contains four quadratic terms. So in the algorithm, we first extract the variable appearing most in quadratic terms. So in this example, uh, the variable is x2, which appears three times. Okay, so after that, for the term with the smallest index, I mean, in this case, x1, x2, x, replace the counterpart of the variable, I mean, x1, 
so that the index one can disappear from all other variable, all other quadratic terms. So that means we replace uh, x1 to x1, x4, x3, x4, x4. And then by uh, this replacement, uh, other quadratic terms with x2 disappears. Okay, so the bottom is the results of the application. Uh, we still have like several other variables which appears more than once, but for the uh, index two, uh, the number of occurrences is only one. So by just applying uh, this uh, basic procedure iteratively, we can eventually get uh, disjoint quadratic form. So this is the algorithm for the uh, 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 for this example. So uh, first is applying the basic procedure. So the example is the same as the previous one in the previous slide. And so we get the second one with uh, variable y. And after we get it, then the second process is check if the variable for non-identity substitution, means the variable for y1, appears multiple times. And in this example, uh, y1 appears actually twice. So the answer is yes. So we have to go to step. And if this is no, then we just can go back to step one and just like iterate the uh, analysis. Okay, so the, in the step three, uh, we apply basic procedures uh, for the non IDT sub substitution terms, uh, substitution variables. So I mean, uh, in the example in the middle, uh, we try to uh, reduces the number of uh, index one to one by uh, doing the uh, same, same approach. So after the uh, second application, uh, the number of terms with index one is only once. So uh, we still have uh, Z5 uh, twice in, uh, uh, in two different uh, quadratic terms. So we have to uh, iterate the basic procedure for Z5 later. But after uh, several more uh, iterations, we eventually get uh, disjoint quadratic form. Okay. So by using uh, this uh, algorithm, uh, we combine it with MILP approach, and then uh, we get some good linear trail on Morris. Okay, so first I'd like to introduce the overall structure of Mora's authenticated, authenticated encryption scheme. So it's a stream, a stream, uh, it has a stream cipher-like structure. So first uh, we have uh, some, uh, uh, the state is initialized by some key and some nonce and some constant. And some initialization process run and we also observe some associated data if there exists, and then step is uh, updated. Okay, so then, uh, so we have some updated state, and if in each step we extract some key events by using the function g, and then the XOR message to produce the corresponding ciphertext. Then the message is uh, used to update the internal state, and then this process is repeated until all, uh, all message blocks are encrypted. Okay, well, then uh, f is a step update function. Uh, it looks like this picture, so I don't get into the details, but the important thing is step uh, update function consists of just XOR and AND gates and rotation, which is easy to model in the mixed integer linear programming. Okay, so this is the overall structure. Uh, so the approach is uh, approx linearly approximate this, uh, this uh, encryption process only by using ciphertext. So in the first uh, thing to do is approximate ciphertext bits in the first block to some internal state. So I mean, lambda zero is a uh, linear, uh, is linearly approximated to gamma zero. And then similarly, lambda one is approximated to gamma one, and so on. Well, uh, we also need to uh, make some approximation for uh, step update function. So input alpha zero is 
uh, approximated to some beta zero, and alpha one is approximated to beta one, and so on. Okay, so uh, because uh, all operations are simple, this is uh, can, this can be modeled by mixed integer linear programming very easily. But to to be a valid uh, linear trail, uh, we have some uh, we need to set some conditions. The first one is the input, I mean the state after the initialization, uh, must be all inactive. And the last state, which is denoted by alpha k, must be also in, uh, inactive. And the uh, uh, sum of the internal state must be some like varied. But by just like uh, imposing those conditions, uh, we can model the uh, a transformation by mixed in integer linear programming. Okay, so, so this is a rough sketch of the searching procedure. So first in the, in the preparation phase, so we needed to fix the target number of blocks first. Of course, we can try several choices of K. And then uh, we model the step function and the key stream generation by mixed integer linear programming and by setting some conditions uh, uh, mentioned before. Okay, so after I make the model, uh, this, uh, the phase one is to solve uh, mixed integer linear programming to find a minimum number, uh, to, to find the trail with minimum number of act, uh, active AND gates. Okay, so this just minimizes the number of active gates because uh, it involves some dependent AND gates. It doesn't really mean that the results are like best. best. So after that, in the phase two, for each solution of uh, MLP, we calculate the correlation by transforming the system to uh, disjoint quadratic form. And this allows us to uh, evaluate the correlation of the entire uh, structure. Okay, so, uh, so this, uh, the next two slides are somewhat uh, like uh, for expert, which knows the previous results. I mean, how the linear discovered linear trail look differ from the uh, different, uh, from the previous one. Well, I uh, again don't uh, explain the details, but the idea is in the linear trail, we first uh, approximate the cipher text bits to some, uh, some bits in the second state, second internal state. And then the second, the bit of second inner internal state is approximated to the fourth inter, inter, uh, internal state. Okay, but the approach here, I mean the trail here, is exactly the same as uh, the previous one. The new one is in the next slide. So after we get the bits of S4, yeah, here, uh, after we get the bits of S4. We approximate that bits to uh, XOR sum of three bits of the internal state. Then the, this XOR sum of three bits uh, is approximated to the uh, cyphatics bit. So after we reach uh, one bit of S4, we only need just two uh, approximations. So this is really like short compared to previous one. That's the reason why our trail has much higher correlation. Okay, so here is again the summary of the attack results. Uh, so our, our, our trail has correlation to this minus three, uh, to this minus 38, which only requires data complexity to this 76. And the span it uh, shows the number of blocks we need to, uh, to complete the linear trail. So the previous one requires uh, five message blocks, but uh, we can build our trail only by using four uh, message blocks. Okay, uh, so the information below is about the verification uh, process. So we uh, tried to verify our trail, and so the so there is a smaller version of Morris proposed by the previous work called Mini Morris. So this is like a shrinked version, and uh, yeah, because the state is small, uh, we can experimentally verify the uh, coordination. And so we did, uh, we checked the coordination, and the theoretically suggested coordination is two to the minus eight, 
and our uh, verification confirms that uh, the correlation is 2 to the minus 7 point, like 7 point 7.8 for uh, minimal 640, and uh, 2 to the minus 8.15 for bigger version of the minimal, so which is quite close. And uh, we also uh, did some verification of the uh, real morals, but due to the uh, high complexity, we can't do the experiment. So we separate the trail by fragments, several fragments, and uh, verify the correlation of the fragments one by one. And it worked very well. Okay, so I'd like to give the concluding remarks. So, uh, also we uh, did automated linear trail search on Morris, and we showed uh, that uh, we showed a, a new algorithm to convert a quadratic Boolean function to the disjoint quadrat quadratic form. And the searching procedure uh, is combined with our MILP based automatic search. And as a result, uh, we broke security claim of all versions of Morris. And so one open problem is, so our algorithm uh, is now uh, taking the input as uh, quadratic Boolean functions. So the open problem is uh, extending uh, this conversion to deal with uh, Boolean functions with degrees higher than two. Yeah, that's about it. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Is there any questions? Thanks you for the network. Yes. Um, so quadratic S boxes are becoming quite popular. I mean, the catcher Kai layer, uh, LMC raster, and so on. Do it, can you imagine applications to those constructions as well? Uh, Uh, yes, I think I think uh, it should work, but uh, we uh, we didn't uh, try to apply it to, to the catch track. But uh, in general, yeah, the conversion should work. Thank you. Any more questions? Okay, then let's thank the author again.